I'm Rosemarie Garland Thompson. I'm a professor of English and bioethics at Emory University, which is in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. And I've been working my entire academic career to build an interdisciplinary field that we call disability studies, or sometimes critical disability studies, which is a new way of looking at the embodied or lived experience of people with disabilities and what kinds of lives that we build and how we interact with one another and with the world in the time now in developed countries when disability rights and disability inclusion are being brought forward as part of a larger social justice and inclusion and diversity initiative um, in many cultures. I was born in the United States um, in the mid 20th century. Um, I was born as a person with a disability. Of course, we didn't talk about it then in that way. Um, I was born different. Um, I was born deformed, as it were. But I was born into a family that was loving, and I went about life as anyone would go about life without any kind of consciousness about disability politics, disability inclusion, without any understanding of what we now think about as civil and human rights. And so I grew up making my way in the world, not necessarily as a disabled person, but as a person. And it wasn't until I was a full-on adult that I learned about the concept of civil rights, of women's rights, of the rights of people with disabilities. It wasn't until I had discovered the disability rights movement or even the concept of disability rights that I began to think of myself as a disabled person or to think of myself as politically and socially involved in the movement for building disability rights and disability culture and disability inclusion, the kind of politics that I practice now and that is practiced in general by uh, academics who are involved in progressive liberal agendas in our academic research and teaching. It wasn't until I discovered the women's movement, the larger civil and human rights movements, uh, certainly in the US, the black civil rights movement, that I began to think in terms of the rights to be included in the world, the right to be in the public sphere, the right to an education, the right to access. I had gone to school because I was able to get into the school door uh, because my mother had insisted that um, I receive a public education rather than um, a segregated education. And it was the politicization that came with the recognition of the various civil and human rights movements that made it possible for me to start working in a research and teaching environment to help develop the field of critical disability studies and to think about these questions of social justice and inclusion that have to do with how one as a disabled person lives in the world and navigates it, exercising the rights and obligations of citizenship that are now guaranteed with civil and human rights legislation that many developed countries are including now. The I is a very important statement of ownership and exercise of the right to be in the world. And for certain groups, um, people with disabilities, for example, there has been traditionally a question about the right of people with disabilities to occupy space, to be in the larger public world, 
people with disabilities and other groups, certainly women in general, but people with disabilities have historically been excluded from exercising the full rights of citizenship. So it becomes very important to exercise the privilege and the obligation to say I, to claim what we might call disabled subjectivity by saying something like, as a person with a disability or as a disabled person, I. And to claim that space of agency and subjectivity in order to produce knowledge and to give voice to experience and to assert the right to be in the world. People with disabilities provide us, I think now, with a very generative opportunity to think through how bodies in their various manifestations can interact effectively with the world. So a person with a disability, the kind of disability, say, that I have, or any of the bodily variations that we think now of as disabilities, provide an opportunity for a resourcefulness amongst all human beings to think about how technologies can be designed and made that allow fleshly bodies to interact with their environments in effective ways. And because now we recognize the differences that we think of as disabilities, as opportunities for designing technologies to link body to world, it's a great opportunity for resourcefulness. I've been invited here, uh, much to my delight, by my colleague Rachel Robertson from the Department of Media and Communication Studies to come to Curtin and to work as a consultant to both learn about what is going on here in critical disability studies and to contribute and work with the faculty and students here that are interested in knowing more about critical disability studies and to think through how disability inclusion and disability diversity is operating here at Curtin University.